Emma and Ashley shared a pizza. The amount of pizza each girl ate is shown in the models below. What fraction of the pizza did the girls eat in all? Let's figure out how much pizza each person ate first. We know that Emma ate one third of the pizza. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's 12 pieces here. And out of those 12, Ashley ate one, two, three, four, five, six. So she ate six twelfths of the pizza. Now let's go back and reread the problem. Emma and Ashley shared a pizza. The amount of pizza each girl ate is shown in the models below. What fraction of the pizza did the girls eat in all? Okay, reading this, we want to know how much they ate. Okay, so we know how much each person ate. We need to find out how much they totally ate. Which means this is going to be an addition problem. So we have one third, we're adding six twelfths. You cannot, may not, will not, should not, thou shalt not add or subtract fractions unless they have a common denominator. These do not have a common denominator. So I go over here, I'm going to find my least common denominator. And my least common, or I did it wrong again. Greatest common factor, nope, least common denominator, I was right, which is going to be the smallest denominator that they have in common, the smallest factor they have in common. Not the factor, the smallest multiple they have in common. So I take both denominators, 3 and 12, and I just start listing the multiples. If you have a multiplication chart or you make a multiplication chart, it'll make your life much easier for this. We have 6, we have 24, we have 9, we have 36, we have 12. 12 is the smallest multiple of both 3 and 12. So we need to make both of these fractions over 12 without changing their value. So this needs to be over 12, which means I need to multiply it by a fraction that equals 1, because if I multiply something by 1, I do not change the value. 3 times what is going to equal 12? Well, 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4. 3 times 4 equals 12. So if I multiplied the denominator by 4, 3 times 4 was 12. i got to do the same thing to the numerator. 1 times 4 is 4. So 1 third is equivalent to 4 twelfths. One third is equivalent to four twelfths. Six twelfths is already over twelve. So I'm just going to leave six twelfths as it is. I go back and I always check my sign. I want to make sure I'm doing the right operation. I have four twelfths plus six twelfths. And you know when adding fractions or subtracting fractions, you only change the numerators. You leave the denominator the same. You don't add or subtract the denominator. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 twelfths. But Mr. McMurdo, that answer's not on here. That's because we need to find the greatest common factor. To simplify these fractions. So I'm going to find all the factors of 10 and all the factors of 12. And I know that neither one of these is a prime number because they're both even. And the only prime number that is even is 2. So if I have 1 times 5, or 1 times 10, 2 times 5, and those are the only factors of 10, the only numbers that can divide evenly into 10. 12, we're going to have 1 times 12. It's always easiest to start with the 1 in itself. It's an even number, so 2, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. If we go and look and we see which ones they have in common, they're always going to have 
one in common. This also has two in common. And that is all they have in common. So my greatest common factor is two, which means I take that and I divide both my numerator and denominator by, well, that is a horrible looking number one. I divide it by one, because everybody knows if you divide something by one, you don't change the value of it. So I'm dividing by two, because that is the greatest common factor. Two over two does equal one. 10 divided by two is five. 12 divided by two is six. So my answer is five six. One third plus six twelfths is five six. Thank you.